morning. Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. And that is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, questions about our Truth Skin Health products, which are available at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com, success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, please go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. That's pharmacistben.com, brightsideben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Or call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 for more information. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. We've been talking about fats, dietary fats, the relationship between uh, their properties, their health properties, their digestive requirements, absorption requirements, and their length or their sizes. We said they came in three sizes. You've got uh, long fats, medium fats, short fats. Most of us think of, when most of us, th when most of us think of fats, we think of the long fats. On our last program, we talked about the medium-sized fats, which have really interesting properties because they're me because of the, the medium size. They have a certain amount of water solubility. Unlike the stuff we or, well, no, we ordinarily ordinarily think of fats, we think of the oily, greasy stuff. MCTs are not quite as greasy. They have a certain degree of water solubility. That greasy quality that we think of when we think of fats is really a function of how long they are. It's a function of their size. The greasiness is a type of stickiness. It's like having a, a, a it's like having Velcro. The longer or, or the more sticky uh, area you have in your Velcro, the stickier the Velcro is. The more little barbs you have on the Velcro. Long fats have more barbs, more sticky pieces, if you will, than the medium fats or than the short fats. Medium fats don't have as much stickiness. They're more water soluble. They dissolve in water. That means you don't have to process them like you do long fats. They enter directly into the bloodstream. Long fats can't do that. They're too sticky. They're too greasy. The body has to package them up. Long fats have to be processed. They're wrapped up. Essentially what happens is the long fats are kind of wrapped up in a little, little package, a little water soluble package. It's called a lipoprotein. I'm sure everybody's heard that term. Lipoproteins. Low density lipoprotein. HDL is high dense. Uh, LDL is low density lipoprotein. HDL is high density lipoprotein. High density just means heavy. Low density means light. These these lipoproteins come in different sizes, like the fats they carry. That's the job of a lipoprotein, is to carry fats around because they're too sticky to go into the blood. Also, lipoproteins carry cholesterol around. And when your doctor measures, wants to measure your cholesterol levels, he'll measure your LDL or your HDL. He's not measuring your cholesterol. He's measuring the little package that carries the cholesterol. HDL is not cholesterol. LDL is not cholesterol. They're little packages that carry the cholesterol because these cholesterol, like the fats, can't go right into the blood. MCTs go right into the blood. 
your longer chain fats have to go through the lymphatic system. It's a little bit different. The, the, you eat it, when you eat a long, uh, a long chain fat and oil, which is what most of us are eating, you know, vegetable oils typically, that's where most of us are getting our long chain fats. The vast majority of the dietary fats that Americans get are long chain fats, and they go into the intestine. They, first, they, they got to get broken down by bile. So first, you got to have your good bile system. You got to have your gallbladder and all that going on. Then they go into the intestine. Then uh, they go right from the intestine into the uh, into uh, the lymphatic system but before they do that they got to get wrapped up in these little lipoproteins and they go right into the lymphatic system they circulate and they get dumped off in the, somewhere in the center of your chest that's where all your dietary fats get dumped and then they go uh, into the blood and it's a whole big complicated process so uh, the point I'm making here is MCTs don't have any of that stuff MCTs go right to work they go right into the bloodstream and the fact, by the way, that you uh, the vegetable oils are processed by the lymph is why if you have any kind of chronic health disease, chronic health uh, challenge, you're probably dealing with some kind of lymphatic issue. All chronic health challenges have a lymphatic issue. And the less vegetable oils you, you eat, the less work your lymph is going to have to do. The more vegetable oils we eat, the more work our lymph is doing. The more If your lymph is already toxic and sludgy and stagnant, which it, you can rest assured it is if you've got a chronic long-term degenerative disease, this is just another reason to use MCT-rich foods. MCT-rich foods are exactly the foods they tell you not to eat. Coconut oil, butter. Also, you can uh, unprocessed yogurt. Yogurt's a good source of MCTs, but butter and coconut oil have been demonized by the American Heart Association. It turns out that they're a lot easier on the body uh, in many ways, butter, yes, butter, and coconut oil, uh, than, um, than the liquid fats, which put a burden on the lymphatic system. Now, you can still, you, you still want to be a little bit careful with your fats. Nonetheless, there's a, a case can be made that if you're going to be ingesting fatty foods, go MCTs as much as possible. There's another reason why you want to go MCTs, and it has to do with the ketogenic diet, which we'll talk about here in a second. Uh, but uh, the MCTs are not just good for uh, the bloodstream, not just good for energy. Not, they don't just go right into the blood. They're also, uh, and they're not just uh, uh, easy on the lymphatic system. Or they, not, uh, they, they, make it e they make it easier on the lymphatic system when we eat our MCTs. They also support a good microbiome. They also support healthy gut bacteria. Yes, butter and coconut oil support healthy, uh, healthy gut bacteria. As it turns out, the fats we eat impact the microbiome and the microbiome in turn affects the fats we eat. It's a big circle. The bacteria in the gut, your probiotics from your nightly essence and your fermented foods have a major role to play in how our body deals with fat. For one thing, the microbiome helps us digest and process our fats. For another thing, the fats we eat affect our microbiome. And it turns out that MCTs actually can uh, promote healthy or can support a healthy microbiome. According to a, case stu a study from Case University School of Medicine, quote, a diet of coconut oil, uh, of good fats like coconut oil and cocoa butter, that's a, that's, I guess that's a, a good source of uh, MCTs also. A drastically reduced bacterial diversity in mice with Crohn's-like disease. Mice fed beneficial fatty acids had up to 30% fewer kinds of gut bacteria as those fed a normal diet, collectively resulting in a very different gut microbial composition. According to Dr. Alexander Rodriguez Palacios, assistant professor of medicine at Case Western Un Reserve University, the finding is remarkable because it means that a Crohn's patient could also have a beneficial effect on their gut bacteria and inflammation by only switching the type of fat in their diet. That's all he's saying. That's all they did. They just switched the type of fat in their diet from the long chain fatty acids to the uh, short to the medium chain fatty acids. Other research shows uh, MCT can be beneficial for cystic fibrosis, for seizure disorders, for treating diarrhea, chronic diarrhea, and they've got the intestinal anti-inflammatory benefits and microbiome benefits if you're dealing with Crohn's or irritable bowel syndrome or after bariatric surgery or after uh, gastrectomy where they re totally remove the stomach. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. We 
are back on the bright side. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24-7 on the archive pages at benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that one up, and brightsideben.com. You can purchase longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team by clicking on the Join the Team link on all the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. For a one-time $25 fee, you can be in business for yourself and uh, earn thank you checks, work out of your home, right off your home office, or just get your products at the wholesale price if you so desire. Call 866-735-2470 if you'd like to speak to a real live human being or just click on the join the team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for more information. Okay, we're talking about uh, oh, 844-236-6010 is our number, and it looks like uh, we do have some lines open for you. We'll get your calls in our next segment, 844-236-6010. We're talking about uh, short chain or about uh, long chain versus medium chain. We'll talk about short chain fatty acids here in the coming days. Those are really interesting too. The uh, medium chain ones uh, have garnered a lot of attention over the last mm, 15, 20 years. I first started hearing about them back in my gym rat days because uh, they're used by bodybuilders, weightlifters, athletes for a good quick source of energy, which uh, because they don't have to get processed like uh, ordinary fats is it's a legitimate use of these things. Also good for weight loss because they don't have to get processed and they don't get stored like regular fats. They've got benefits for the intestine, anti-inflammatory benefits. Um, but also something else very interesting about MCTs, they're very ketogenic. The um, liver will process MCTs pretty quickly into ketones. They, MCTs go right into the blood, then they go into the liver, and the liver can turn them into ketones pretty quickly. And so if you're, going, uh, if you're using the ketogenic diet, if you're uh, trying to leverage the power of the ketogenic diet, building ketones, uh, MCTs, butter, those are good sources, or even straight MCT oil. Now, you've got to be a little bit careful with the MCTs because if you've got liver problems, remember the liver's doing the work here. So you might want to be, if you have, get diarrhea or you have a, a bloating or just digestive discomfort or abdominal discomfort after you do MCT oil, this is typically where, you, where you'll get the problem if you have a liver issue, um, you may want to back off or do smaller amounts or just get your MCTs from foods. Typically it's not going to happen if you get your MCTs from butter uh, or, or coconut oil, but it could. Coconut oil has got a lot of MCTs in it. That makes it very ketogenic. Um, but uh, you, might want to, you might want to uh, cons reconsider if you notice that you have diarrhea or digestive problems from doing your MCTs or try using coconut oil as opposed to straight MCT. MCT oil that you buy in the health food store, pretty much that is coconut oil, but it's a fraction of the coconut oil. It's a part of the coconut oil that's really concentrated. When you do regular coconut oil, you're getting a wider spectrum of fats. You're also getting vitamin E and other things too. Um, so if you can't do straight MCT oil, you might want to try coconut oil or, uh, or butter. Nonetheless, both of them are ketogenic, and that gives, that gives them some very interesting properties in addition uh, to the fact that uh, MCTs are easy, easy on the body and they're good at anti-inflammatories. The ketogenic aspect of them makes them really helpful for energy. MC, that's where MCTs are, uh, have been used by athletes and by people who are, need, need quick energy or also for weight loss. The ketones also, very interestingly, have some brain benefits. That's why coconut oil is getting such a great reputation for helping deal with Alzheimer's disease. Ketones cross the blood-brain barrier very effectively, and uh, they can uh, be used by the brain for energy. So it's... <laughs> MCTs, there's a lot of reasons to use coconut oil, and there's a lot of reasons to use butter, the best sources of co and also yogurt, uh, which I consider to be the best sources. Dairy in general is going to have some MCTs, but of course, then you've got to deal with all the problems associated with dairy. If you can get um, good, clean milk, fresh, raw milk, if you live in a state where they have fresh, raw milk, that might be a way to get your MCTs. Milk has got some really good stuff in it, but... All in all, the way we drink our milk, not a good food, not a, definitely a problem food, although it does have some good stuff. That's, that's kind of how the world of nutrition is. Uh, sometimes a food has some good things in it, but that doesn't make the food a good food. 
And milk is a classic example that there's wonderful, stupendously valuable nutrients in cow's milk or in any mammal milk for that matter. But you got to deal with a lot of problems with the milk, the way it's processed. If you can get the milk right out of the cow, maybe. Certainly, uh, this case can be made for the nutritional value of milk, raw milk. But the way we drink our milk, it is absolutely, positively, 100% not a good food. It's an awful food, the way we drink our milk, homogenized, pasteurized, processed milk. Not to mention what happens to the cows. Not to mention what they got to give the cows or what the cows are eating, for that matter. But milk does have good, is a good source of MCTs. It's also a good source of another kind of interesting fat, which uh, we've talked about in the past, called conjugated linoleic acid, or CLA, which it turns out is also good for weight loss and for energy as well. Uh, I'm not sure if it gets turned into ketones, but it's definitely good for, has a lot of energy tied up in it. It's a type of, it's a type of omega fatty acid, CLA, but it's not essential, but it's got a lot of health benefits. So MCTs have some really interesting properties because they're water-soluble and fat-soluble. And this water-soluble, fat-soluble kind of leg in both worlds, hydrophilic, lipophilic kind of uh, nature that MCTs have, actually makes them very interesting for the skincare world, for the skincare business. They uh, penetrate through the skin very effectively. They make great transdermal penetrants. I put my retinol in MCTs and our Truth Retinol 5% Gel because it helps enhance the penetration. It also can be used in your hair. And by the way, uh, MCTs, one of the most important of the MCTs is something called lauric acid. You may have heard of lauric acid. Uh, periodically, you'll read about it on the, uh, in the alternative press, alternative health press, I should say, about lauric acid as an antifungal. And it is an antifungal. And some healthcare care professionals will tell you to use coconut oil as an antifungal. Um, but... I don't know if it's a great antifungal, but what it is, is it has detergent properties. This is why uh, when you want to cleanse your skin, you can cleanse your skin with coconut oil because it contains a stuff called lauric acid, which is a type of MCT. It's a medium chain fat. In fact, lauric acid has got such interesting properties that when you combine it with uh, something called sodium sulfite, which is a type of sulfur, when you combine it with sodium sulfite, you get sodium lauryl sulfate. You probably have heard of sodium lauryl sulfate because it's uh, getting all kinds of bad press. It, it has gotten all kinds of bad press for its detergent and irritating qualities. It was a very cheap detergent. All it was was lauric acid, sodium lauryl sulfate with a little bit of sulfur in the form of sodium sulfite. And you combine the two, you get sodium lauryl sulfate. To this day, most detergents, or at least many detergents, non-soap detergents, uh, cosmetic detergents are derived from coconut oil or, or synthetic fats that came, that initially came from coconut oil. Now we, we can synthesize fats so effectively we don't really need coconuts, but still coconuts are a source for, for at least some of the uh, shampoo and, and cleanse shower gels and uh, liquids, they call them liquid soaps, they're not really soaps, but liquid cleanser formulations, a lot of them come from the short, or the medium chain fatty acids that are found in MCTs and you can make your own uh, cleanser just by using uh, straight coconut oil and taking advantage the MCTs that are in the coconut. Remember, they're, they're a little watery, a little fatty, and when something's a little watery and a little fatty, that makes it the ideal cleanser, which we're going to talk about here in the coming days when it comes to a short-chain fatty acids. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. got lines open for you. We'll return on the bright side right after this. On the bright side, thanks for joining us. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll get your calls here in a minute. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products or business or health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, or if you have a success story or just want to comment on the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. From Reuters Health the annual meeting of the Association for Research in Vision and Ophthalmology in Honolulu, Hawaii. Researchers presented evidence that the Mediterranean diet is associated with lower incidence of advanced macular degeneration. It makes perfect sense. AMD is a breakdown of the area of the, of the eye called the macula. And by the way, macular degeneration is not about the macula. It's about the degeneration. We get all thrown off on where the degeneration is taking place. It doesn't really matter where the degeneration is taking place. 
Advanced macular degeneration is heart disease of the eye. It's Alzheimer's disease of the eye. It's arthritis of the eye. It's the same process here. I want to get this idea that where our disease is showing up is, as rele- is anywhere near as relevant as that the disease is showing up. AMD is just deterioration of the eye tissue. Nonetheless, there are pigments that you can ingest that can help with that specific part of the eye because uh, there's really not a lot of pigments found throughout the body, or at least nowhere near as much as found in the eye. This is where the Mediterranean diet can be helpful. The Mediterranean diet is a pigment-rich diet. Not only is it pigment-rich, though, the Mediterranean diet is a pigment-rich diet that has a magical ingredient in it that helps the body utilize the pigments. The magical ingredient is olive oil, or oil in general, also butter probably too. And uh, also, uh, uh, not just olive oil, but also olives. The Mediterranean diet is an oil-rich diet, and these oils help pull the pigments out of the veggies. And this is very important because we've been, we demonize oils a little bit on this program. A lot of other nutritionists really demonize oils. But it has to be recognized that olive oil can have a health benefit, at least partially, because it can pull the pigments out of the, out of the, um, out of the lettuce and the tomatoes and, the, and the, uh, the veggies, whatever veggies you're eating, your cucumbers and your, your bell peppers. All those pigments get pulled out into the oils, especially if you use a tiny an infinitesimally small little bit of heat. Although, if you're going to heat your oils, you might want to stick with your coconut oil or butter. It's never a good idea to heat vegetable oils. Point being that the Mediterranean diet has a lot of health benefits because of the combination of the oils and the veggies. And also, when I'm talking about oils, I'm also talking about omega-3 oils from fish and from seafood. The Mediterranean diet is a, a seafood diet. It's a, it, it has a lot of seafood in it. It has a lot of fiber in it. It has a lot of pigments in it. It has a lot of antioxidants in it. And yes, it has a lot of oil in it. And these oils can have a lot of health benefits. Nonetheless, you got to be careful with your oils. And it's best to get as much of your oil energy or your, oil con- uh, your dietary oil content from butter and from... Uh, and coconut oil. All right, we'll get to one more. We'll read one, one more study, and then we'll get to your phone calls. This is from uh, Eurocare, Euro Heart Care, 2018, the European Society of Cardiology's annual Nursing Congress. The science, the study found that feeling lonely was a stronger predictor of poor outcomes than living alone. Loneliness is more common today than ever before, and more people live alone. Said Anne Vinegard Christensen, and apparently. Loneliness and social isolation have been linked with coronary heart disease and stroke and uh, various forms of cardiovascular disease. Loneliness is a strong predictor of premature death and lower quality of life. I love this because we talk about nutrition all the time on this program. And other programs will tell you about uh, other alternative health strategies. Well, it turns out that just the emotional and the psychological impact of things like sadness and loneliness can have just as much of a negative effect on our health as uh, as uh, cigarette smoking and lack of exercise and all the other things we know are bad for the heart. When was the last time a doctor wrote a prescription for uh, go find some friends? Or uh, join a club or hang out at a senior center if you're an older person. I love this, I love this idea that the, the simple little things can have such a huge impact on our health. And it's so important to recognize in our over-medicalized society, we're, we're obsessed with going to doctors and taking drugs. And now, now the, the latest thing in the uh, mainstream press about health and, and, and medicine is uh, cheaper prescription drugs. So everybody can have their prescription drugs inexpensively and almost free. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Time to hit the phones. Let's go to, uh, let me see if I can get this thing to work here. Hmm. Let's go to Elaine in Alaska. Good morning, Elaine. Hi, I'm Elaine, but I'm not in Alaska. Oh, Elaine in California. Hey, Elaine, That's what's right. up? <laughs> what's going well, on? Yes. Well, a lot of things are going on, and I need help. Um, yes. I want to know, Ben, if you've ever heard of uh, CRPS, one thing. Uh, yes, pain, uh, regional pain syndrome. Is that what you're talking about? Well, it's uh, neurological, I've been told. I've been living yeah. with it, yes. And you're in cool, uh, which, what part of your body? Uh, mine's all on my left side. And did you have an accident or trauma of some kind? Yeah. yeah what happened? Yeah, 
Well, I've worked for ATF as a law enforcement officer, and I oh. got whacked over the head. Oh, my, so, oh my God. That's terrible. Like, a, like pistol whipped kind of thing? Um, well, not with that. It was a little more simpler than that. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> but but you got, Yeah, well, CR, uh, a chronic regional pain syndrome typically occurs after people have accidents or, or falls right. or just weird things. It's just residual inflammation. You didn't heal is what basically happened. So you got to work on the – when you're not healing correctly, the body heals itself. When you're not healing correctly, the problem is coming from two different directions. Number one, the wrong thing is getting in. Number two, the right stuff isn't. You follow me? It's the only two reasons yeah, why we don't yeah. heal. Okay. I'm, so the I'm wrong like, stuff getting in is more of an emergency probably than the right st- – I don't want to – they're both important. But the first thing I would focus on is the wrong thing getting in, anything pro-inflammatory. If you're eating like a regular person, stop. You cannot yeah. eat like a – okay, good. You can't eat like a regular American with, when have. you have this kind of problem. All right, so you're, very, you're aware of your diet and what, you, what to do? Are you paying attention that way? I'm aware of my diet, but I'm in an assistant living where they don't feed you. No, nah, that's terrible. That's pro. That's pro-inflammatory food that they're feeding you. Yeah, uh, here's so I'm you're going to have vegetarian. That's good, but you may have a problem with vegetables. But you're still oh. better, and, and you may have a problem okay. with the bean. A lot of times, when when you eat vegetarian, you eat a lot of beans, and that yeah. they're very pro-inflammatory beans because it's cheap protein. So you got to be really careful, and also grains in general. You got to be really careful with all that. I, I'd be sticking to soups, protein soups, if you can. I mean, do they give you soup every day? No. Uh, maybe two times a week, three times a week. Can you, can you like sneak a Vita? Wick, can you sneak a Vitamix in your room? Um, can I sneak it in? No, they steal everything that you've got. Oh no! Down. Do you have some a friend who can come in there with a Vitamix? You need soups. You need liquids. Aloe vera, um, vegetable juices, chicken soup. Aloe vera. Chicken yeah, aloe, soup, yeah, aloe vera. You need liquid nutrition, and you need liquid liquids. Nutrition. Yeah, aloe vera has got some na- nice anti-inflammatory benefits. Get the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, of course. I'd also okay. use... I'd also use the Fucoid Z. If you can't get uh, if you can't get chicken soup, see if you can get bone broth protein, and then make yeah, bone broth protein. Do you have that? Uh, found that I can get it. Just yeah, and then gel and then gelatin caps also. Elaine, God bless you. We'll let you go. I hope I helped you out. Don't forget the gelatin, not just gelatin caps, but even just Knox gelatin. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben. We'll be back on the bright side right after this. Back on the bright side, eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. Good morning, Don in California. What's going on, buddy? I have uh, I've been taking the longevity stuff for ten years, and okay. I have MRSA. Uh, I have a urinary infection, and no antibiotics seems to work. Like right now, oh. they gave me Cipro, and it's just not working. Have you tried Lugol solution? Lugol, how do you spell that? Uh, L-U-G-O-L-S, Lugols. Have a pharmacist make it for you. Okay, good. L- L- it's an yeah. iodine solution. I, uh, I did. I, I, I know what it means to live alone. I'm 88. And it oh, my is goodness. It's pretty rough. Yeah, well, that's it's terrible. I'm sorry. And I, unfortunately, I had a, a bad fall and hit, hurt my back. Oh, I'm so sorry. Ago. Where do you live? Better, but, are you in a big but, city? Okay, I'll try the loop. Hey, where, where do you live, Don? Are you in a big I city or a little town? I've seen you before. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, Don. Good luck with that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear that. That's got to be miserable. Urinary oh, tract you infection. Know, thank you. Okay, thanks. Urinary uh, tract infection is just miserable anyway, but I can't imagine it. antibiotic resistant. All right, let's see. I'm having a little problems with my board here. Thank you, Don, for your call. Let's go to Diane in Nebraska. Good morning, Diane. Morning, Ben. How you doing? Good, good. What's Besides going on? Besides the thousand dollar root canal, what can oh. you do for a abscess tooth? Uh, I don't know if I'd mess around with an abscess tooth. They want a thousand dollars for a root canal, huh? Yeah, you know, if it gets really bad, you're gonna you're gonna lose the tooth, and it could be it's not painful now. I take it. It's, it's no. a Okay. You don't want it to get to a period where it's painful. I mean, you could use things like uh, salt water. Um, there's herbs you could use, oil pulling. I, I don't know if I'd mess around with it, Diane, to be perfectly honest. Uh, if it's 
you know, you don't want it to get really bad. But an, ab, an abscess tooth is a tooth that's got uh, infection in an area that's very hard to deal, uh, very hard to address. So you can't really, is, it, is there, you have pus, is it draining at all? No, no. And I've been okay. using uh, the, the bentonite clay poultice. Maybe, it, you, depending on how deep it is. The problem, the problem is, is that the tooth could be deteriorating and you don't even know it. And that's where you really run, into, and that's where you run into a problem. And I, and then on top of that, uh, you could get stuff that leaks into the bloodstream too. I, I don't, I'll tell you what, I don't know if I'd mess around with that, Diane. My personal opinion. I know it's okay. expensive, but it can get. You don't want it to get to a place where it's really bad. I, I don't. I don't mess with my teeth personally. As soon as I feel something, I'm getting it taken care of. That's my personal opinion. All right, Diane. Okay. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. Hope I helped you out. All right, let's see. Good morning, John in Kansas. Is this DNA, John? John? Uh, could be, yeah. Hey, uh, did you send me a note about a, about uh, some DNA information? I might have, yeah. I, I didn't uh, get anything. Several if, people. Yeah, people somebody sent me a note about some D- Okay, well, then maybe it wasn't you. What's going on? How can I help you? i um, been reading Sherry Rogers, uh, uh-huh. Toxic Which, Tired. Okay, Tired or Toxic? Tired or toxic. She um, talks about trichloroethylene, and we have a problem with that. Uh, there's a plume of it about to enter our uh, groundwater supply in our area. Uh, where do and you live? She mentioned where in... uh, Salina, Kansas, north central Kansas. Is there, are there factories out there? What kind of factories you got? It was a uh, Air Force base that dumped oh, okay. all of them that's been oh, okay. to a municipal oh, great. airport. They just dumped it there? Anyway, yeah, over the years. Okay. All right, so what's going on? It's in the water and everything? Is it in the water? She, she met, uh, not yet, but she mentioned something in uh, talking about detoxification, or she calls it detoxification, that trichloroethylene conjugates glucuronic acid. Okay, makes, it, makes sense. It, it sounds to me like something you say when you're talking about the uh, tinker toys. Put yep, pieces in, it's a tinker toy, out. that's right. It's a tinker toy thing. And yeah. I wonder That's what con- you, you conjugation, can... conjugation, like conjugal visits, you know, you've heard the term conjugal uh-huh. visits, like when people go to prison, they have conjugal visits, right? Conjugation means a, two pieces getting connected to each other. It's a, con- it's a tinker toy reaction. You're co- absolutely correct. And it's one of the ways that the body clears out the trichloroethylene is, it's, is it conjugates with the, with, the, uh, with the glucuronic acid and it all gets dumped out. That's why using glucuronic acid foods or containing foods and supplements is, is so helpful. What were you going to ask me, though? I, I didn't mean to interrupt. I, I wondered if um, there was something that, that uh, she calls it a xenobiotic. That's Any correct. Foreign chemical, when it gets in there, it's going to downregulate good functions in the body and it's going to upregulate bad functions. Is there something specific that you know about TCE that um, messes with the body that yeah, you should be a, on the lookout for? Uh, brain stuff. It's an anesthetic. Ooh. It's yeah. It's oh, wow. it'll, it'll, it's a it's a brain fog agent. Headaches, dizziness, confusion, dement, uh, dementia. Alt, uh, not dementia, but uh, like forgetfulness. Ultimately, dementia, even depression. It's basically it's a brain substance. It's a solvent. So it just it kind of it, it right. goes everywhere. Really, it goes into fatty cells. And the brain is a fatty structure. Also, can cause heart problems for that matter too. Heart and brain. Those are your main things. Liver toxicity. Also, I guess you could say. It's a big mess. Now, you know, our environment is so polluted that we're all dealing with trace amounts of this stuff. But if they got, if they're actually dumped it to the point where it's, you know, there's enough of it that it's getting into the water supply, that's pretty terrible. That, you know, the Air Force, a government agency would actually do that. That's awful. So, yeah, brain stuff is the most important thing. And Parkinson's disease, dementia, those kinds of things. It's so also, also kind of, kidneys, uh, liver and kidneys, too. Uh, yeah, what can you do? Yeah, Bentonite yeah. clay? Bentonite clay is probably the best thing that I would do. Also, anything you could do to support glucuronidation and biohealth, all the stuff we've been talking about for the last, I don't know, couple weeks, three weeks, broccoli, Brussels sprouts. You should be doing broccoli and Brussels sprouts and cruciferous vegetables every single day. In fact, if I were you, I'd be doing it twice or three times a day. Yeah, lots of it. Also, you can get something called calcium D glucurate which uh, can be helpful. Anything that supports glucuronidation, anything, anything that supports uh, 
the health of the liver or the bile system. That's what I'd be and Ultimate enzymes, you know, keep in mind your ultimate enzymes are a detox supplement. I know we said it several times already, but uh, just to reminder, the ultimate enzymes taken on an empty stomach can support detoxification, uh, particularly of things like uh, trichloroethylene, which is so fatty. All right. Exactly. Anything else, buddy? I appreciate it. We thank love thank the, you, John. The, the cell issues that you bring up, uh, you like that, and all that stuff. We've just just gone into the weeds with that, and we're just loving the study. Oh, good deal. I appreciate that. Thank you, John. Have a great day, man. All right, uh, Truth Raider, Carl, the Truth Raider. You get the last word on the bright side today. What's going on? Good morning, Ben. Today is about positivity. I like it. Feeling feel again. What and is it? Gary Mendelman wrote a song called "Trying to Get That Feeling Again." Oh, all right. That all right. Boy I- in your heart. When's okay. the last time you can remember you had an adrenaline rush, or most folks, you know, that, you, that has an adrenaline rush, that they they feel a joy about something. And uh, you're like skipping down the street like a little kid, yeah. you know? You, you know, know, I used to, you know, I used to watch my kids. Marble, with marbles and having a good time. I love that. Blast. I love yeah. that. I used to watch my kid do spontaneous cartwheels just for, out of the middle of nowhere. And I always thought, what if, what if uh, like an adult did a spontaneous cartwheel down the street for no reason? Right. He'd probably get arrested. Happened. Yeah, you'd probably go to jail and lock him up or something. Yeah, no, I, that's a very good point. We've lost our sense of spontaneous joy, and also we've lost our sense of joy for the little things. I mean, the tiny little right. things. Little kids, they get up out of bed. They can't wait to get out of bed, right? Remember when you were a little kid, right. you couldn't wait to get out of bed? Now you can't You pull, pull the covers over your head when you wake up. You don't want to get out of right. bed, right? You can't wait to go back to sleep. When you're a little kid, you don't want to go to sleep, and something happens. I don't know where... Where does that go wrong? Where does it all go wrong? Somewhere, somewhere in our teenage uh, years. Yeah. yeah, I think the system has stigmatized us and suppressed us against feeling our inner joy. That's that's not appropriate. Or it, they made it the sense that they 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 built this mind control over us that that's immature. Yeah, that's a, it is. It's a mind. The whole fear. The whole fear thing. That's why you don't want to watch the news. That's why you don't want to listen to podcasts and internet shows and you know news shows where they encourage fear. If you if you're if you have anger or fear, because anger is a type of fear, by the way. Anger, sad, anger and sadness are both types of fear. Uh, they're hidden forms of fear. If you feel angry or you feel sad or depressed or you feel hopeless or you feel scared after you listen to a, a news show or a radio show or a podcast or whatever it is, uh, you don't want to be listening to that because it's spiking your cortisol, it's accelerating the aging process, it's shutting down your healing system, it's slowing down your digestive system. Don't underestimate the importance of the psychological, emotional, spiritual, and mental dimensions of health. We talk about the physical all the time, but don't underestimate these other aspects of health. I can always tell. If somebody's not healing as they should and they're doing everything correctly physically, I can always tell there's got to be a psychological or some kind of abstract mental or emotional aspect that's at play. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks, Carl, for pointing that out. Appreciate it very much. Have yourself a good day. Carl, the Truth Raider, and thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products, and truthtreatments.com for our truth skin health products. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.